some of those pro-America deals. They brainwash you. The United States government, this structure, just like a triangle. Number one, pyramids are illegal. The military stays recruiting, colleges stay recruiting, so if you want to stay in business, you know that you got to keep recruiting, right? Don't you let nobody steal your dreams! Many people have commented on my channel asking me to investigate whether or not Primerica is a pyramid scheme. So after calling around to multiple Primerica offices in my city, I finally found a representative who was willing to sit down and explain to me exactly what Primerica does. Do you have some time, um, let's see, Sunday? Since so many people in my city recognize me for my pyramid scheme videos, I told this recruiter that my name was Alex. I got dressed for success and I got my hidden microphone and spy pen camera ready to go. Okay, I just got here to Primerica and I'm nervous. I haven't done one of these in person in three years. Wish me luck. Alex, good Thank you so much. This is our office. Amazing. You know, when it's full and there's a bunch of people in here, it is the most positive place you'll ever see. So, um, Primerica is one of the only companies in the world that has the most million dollar earners. Of any company? Mm -hmm. So the most people who have become a millionaire from their job is from Primerica? Correct. Oh wow. Primerica does come up as the number one result when I Googled it, but when you click on the source, you find this picture of a person on a motorcycle posted on a Facebook page called Toys for Boys. I think there's some sort of SEO optimization strategy going on here. And when you search commonly asked questions about the company, you find overwhelmingly positive results. For example, Primerica's website explicitly says that not only are they not appearing pyramid scheme, they aren't even multi-level marketing. This is simply untrue. Primerica is a member of the Direct Selling Association, which is composed almost entirely of MLM companies and lobbies the government on their behalf. We'll get into that more in depth later. So if you as the RVP trained and developed three RVPs, you're now a senior vice president, which means your income could be anywhere from $10,000. Mm -hmm. I've seen uh, senior vice presidents make 50 a month. 50,000 a month. Yes. So you can make up to, and no, I don't say up to because it is an unlimited income potential. So you get all the training for social media, what you can, can't do, all of those things. Oh, they have Twitter. You can't do certain Instagram. things? Instagram. Yeah, because we are highly regulated. You can't go, I make $500,000 a year. Oh, you can't why not? That. Because what you want to do is you want to talk to people about the opportunity. But how do you talk about the opportunity that's life changing exactly. without giving examples of how it changed your life? Oh, it changes every, you're not wrong. Throughout the process of making this video, I recorded hundreds of Instagram stories and other social media posts from Primerica agents at the highest level of the company that violated not only Primerica's own internal social media guidelines, but also of this FTC warning letter that was issued to over 1,100 companies, most of them MLM companies, including Primerica, that says if their distributors made false money-making claims to consumers, they could be fined over $43,000 per violation. If typical representatives do not achieve such results, then your post may be considered false or misleading by regulators. You can, you can. You can celebrate most milestones and achievements with the required earnings disclosure described on page 15 and 16, but you may not reference milestones for million dollars earners and above. Yes. This is 2021. These are all the million dollar earners. So we literally just looked at an official Primerica document that said not to make reference to million dollar earners and above. And then she pulled out a book showing all the million dollar earners. Mario Arizon. He was 18 years old when he he started with Primerica. He was the youngest million dollar earner to hit a million dollars at 28 years old. And they used to tell me, hey, Mario, don't get your hopes up. Let me tell you right now, you better get your hopes up. I want you to imagine this. You see a rabbit fly through your backyard. You're like, where did that come from? And then three seconds later, you know why it's running. There's a big old dog chasing it. See, now I want you to picture that same dog, but you never seen the rabbit. You would think that dog's crazy. Well, guess what? That's what your family thinks about you sometimes. It's just a matter of time before they convince you that you're crazy and you're gonna stop chasing greatness and that's sad. Mario Arizon runs the Arizon hierarchy team in Primerica. Mario utilizes all the logical fallacies in the book to defend Primerica, but he's especially gifted when it comes to emphasizing the importance of belief. This, combined with his rags to riches story and the nonstop, almost daily deceptive lifestyle and earnings claims he posts on Instagram, has made Mario one of Primerica's most successful recruiters. This is me working at a night swami. See, on the weekends, I had to work since five in the morning and I wouldn't come home sometimes to one 
one in the morning. You know what God was doing? He was shaping me for my destiny. How I represent myself in this earth is how I represent him. And there's no way God has blessed me with too much for me to let him down and make him look bad. I went from living in a van to living in the freaking mansion. And this is actually my guest house. You got the Versace on? Yes, got Versace, some Louis on. I got this for Father's Day, a beautiful Roly. We're building a resort, so I have a basketball court here. This is not just any regular pool. It's gonna be a wave pool. Man, this pool is really cool at night. Lights wow. up, fire, everything. I'll bring out the Lambo, you'll bring out the rolls. <laughs> When after I'm done, this house will be like 10, 15 million dollars. Building a life-size theater. How much money do you make per month? Around a million dollars a month. A million a month. Yeah. They ask Mario, how are you so humble? Our team is not like family, they are a family. So they come over, we have a blast, we sell them the dream. My mom's uh, birthday was yesterday and that's awesome. But they used to say, even on her birthday, like Mario, what type of son are you? It's Mother's Day, you're working on Mother's Day? Yeah. You know what I told him? What do you tell him? That's why I'm working so hard. So every day can be my mom's Mother's Day. Yeah. What? Who says once a year I can celebrate my mom's day? Yeah. That's an employee mindset. Oh, you went to one of those Pro America deals. They brainwash you. Every person on the stage will tell you they've been through that. It's your ability to say, you know what? I love you, but I love you enough to keep you. Love you enough from a distance. Oh, that's my mom. Your mom will thank you one day. Mary Lou. What type of mother are you? Your son's not going to college? Your son's doing that pyramid thing, huh? Hey, I drive the Lamborghini. Mama, don't have to worry about money no more because I know my purpose! Don't you let nobody steal your dreams! His heart is so big and yeah. it just, it blows my mind. That's the Primerica Convention, so we go to the Mercedes Bend in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, wow. And we fill it. And that's why we became the youngest half a million dollar earner in Primerica. Yeah. What other opportunity do you know of that's gonna pay a 21 year old half a million dollars? These extravagant Primerica conventions are in my opinion, nothing more than expensive hype rallies where recruits listen to hours of mindless motivational babble from the people at the very top of the company. These events are where chanting, singing, clapping, praying, and manifesting all get mixed with music and confetti and mob psychology to create an almost religious euphoria among the attendees. It's also worth noting that every MLM I've ever looked into holds events like these multiple times a year to keep morale in the company high and discourage people from leaving. The message pushed at these events is usually along the lines of quitters never win and winners never quit. It's these elements that contribute to why I believe MLM companies operate as commercial cults. Primerica even has their own propaganda videos that they use to discredit outside sources of information. Check it out. If you've surfed the web, you've probably read a lot of things that don't make sense or are simply not true. You would not believe the advertising revenue that's generated by people who build deceptive websites just to make a quick buck. You know, people have a right to be wrong just because they type it on the internet. That doesn't make it true. If you Google moon landing scam, you'll find 184,000 search results. I once heard the internet described as the bathroom wall of the 21st century. If you hang around negative people, sooner or later, it's bound to have a negative impact on you. Scam, right. The world's largest independent financial marketing company, licensed in every single state. Some of the top private equity firms in the world investing hundreds of millions of dollars with us. You think that they probably would have uncovered a scam before your brother-in-law did? If that's a scam, I'll take two, please. That's my kind of scam. What other company or industry can you think of that has to go this hard to try and convince you they're not a scam? The beauty of Primerica is I can do it part-time, I can do it full-time, or I can do it in my spare time. My clients are not just clients. They are my friends. They are pieces of my family. So I take them very seriously. So when they call me at 11 o'clock at night, I'm going to answer the darn phone. Part-time, full-time, or spare time, but you're answering the phone for clients at 11 o'clock at night? That sounds to me like you're working all the time. This is the Kate. video that's going to kind of explain everything of what we do. Kate. And so it's a business opportunity video. A lot of companies have done their research on us, and many have chosen to partner with Primerica to help us fulfill our mission across North America. So Primerica deals with financial products, primarily insurance, and they act as a middleman between the policy issuer and the customer. What I take issue with here is them saying that they are partnered with these companies. Primerica is essentially 
essentially a vendor for these companies. So in my opinion, saying they're partnered with them would be like a convenience store owner saying they're partnered with Coca-Cola and Doritos because they sell Coca-Cola and Doritos. The video then attempts to legitimize Primerica by mentioning that they're listed on the New York Stock Exchange, that they've been around since 1977, and how they're a part of the Fortune 1000, and how Forbes named them one of America's most trustworthy financial companies. There's no doubt that Primerica is certainly a legal company, but just because a company is publicly traded and has been around a long time doesn't eliminate the potential for wrongdoing. And even though something is legal, it doesn't mean it's ethical. Slavery was legal for hundreds of years, and we can all agree today that it was wrong. The business model is very common. When a doctor has other doctors work for her, she has a practice. When a lawyer hires other lawyers to work for him, he has a firm. When you train people to be financial guides for others, you have an agency. Primerica will do to finance what Amazon did to retail. Aside from Amazon, medical practices, law firms, and insurance agencies, throughout this video, you will hear Primerica compared to traditional corporations, the military, the government, professional sports, colleges, and marriage. These are all false equivalencies that reveal themselves to be completely nonsense when you break them down. Oh, hold on. I know this guy. Uh, Gary, right? Cornegay? Yeah. I've seen him on Instagram driving like a Bentley, I think. I first learned of Gary. Gary Cornegay's existence at the end of 2021. I was doing a live stream on my channel and I had a Zoom link where people could call in and talk to me. He called in to tell me what a big fan of my work he was because he also fights dishonest pyramid schemes. I've been an MLM for 33 years and I've been fighting all these wannabe MLM companies that are structured I hate to say it, like a pyramid scheme. Um, okay, so Gary contradicts Primerica's website and admits that it is, in fact, multi-level marketing. That's a start. Gary thinking that Primerica is any better than the rest of the MLM companies out there is evidence to me of how successful the us versus them brainwashing is. I've heard people in MLMs refer to Amway as Scamway, even though Amway paved the way for these companies to do exactly the same thing, and without Amway, they wouldn't even exist. As a matter of fact, the founder of Primerica, Art Williams, wrote in his book, Coach, that he got the idea for Primerica's structure from Amway. Every MLM I've studied makes its members think that they're the best one and the rest are scams. It's insane. What, what, so can I, I ask thinking. you what the company is, Gary, that you're in? Well, I, I, I don't know if I could do that legally, you know. Why um, not? Without... But well, my compliance department may chew my ass out. I don't think the compliance department would have an issue with you saying, hey, I've been with a company for 33 years and it changed my life. If anything, that's a, that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah, but... I don't know. I mean, the fact that Gary didn't want to tell me the name of the company he was with is a huge red flag to me. In my experience, I've noticed that MLMs often have groups or teams with their own branding that they use to recruit people. And it's usually not until you're already sitting at one of their opportunity presentations where you see what the actual company is. Gary's brand is called the Cornegay Hierarchy or Cornegay Family Enterprises. After I put that video with Gary out, Primerica put a copyright claim on it and I got a copyright strike on my channel as well. Thankfully, I was able to get this reversed after a few days and the video was put back up. Silencing critics and removing any content that questions or criticizes them is arguably the highest priority of a large cult. Primerica even caught wind of me making this video and sent me this cease and desist letter back in April claiming that I had violated their copyright by using their logo in a couple thumbnails from my multi-level misery series where I talked to former Primerica recruits about their experience. They also claimed that my words in those videos were defamatory and specifically demanded that I don't release a video called Infiltrating a Pyramid Scheme, Primerica. I'm from the hood of South Central LA. So I grew up in a, a gang-infested, drug-infested environment. Gary's backstory is all over the place. In our first conversation, he tells me he's from the gang-infested, drug-infested hood. But in an interview that came out a year earlier, Gary says that his life growing up was one of immense privilege. Well, my dad bought his first home in 1961. And then, as time went on, he bought two homes on the block. Then he bought three homes on the same block. Then he bought an apartment complex. And then he bought a parking lot next to a church. Then he bought the church. And he just kind of kept going with that. So it was great, man. So being a kid, you know, in the 1960s for our family was the clear. Cleavers. We really were the cleavers. I'm serious, man. I never wanted to put money. I've never been broke down my life. My parents have always had money. My dad gave me a home. My dad gave me a home for my wedding gift. His contradictions continue when he talks about his education. I did not go to college. I don't have any formal education past high school. As a matter of fact, I repeated to 12th grade. But then in one of his Zoom meetings, Gary is telling this story about how he would call restaurants that were fully booked, trying to get a reservation for his wife's birthday, where he refers to himself multiple times as Dr. Cornegay. I'm Dr. Gary Cornegay. Dr. Cornegay, man. Dr. Cornegay. Thank you so much for helping me out earlier. I did a lot of research for this video, and I could not find a single thing online that would confirm to me that Gary is a doctor in any sense of the word. I don't the restaurant anymore. I don't own the publishing company anymore. 
I don't own the record label anymore. So I'm not saying that I own these things. I was trying to tell you that I failed in all of those businesses. I've seen this a lot in my experience with MLMs where a recruiter talks about how some past business of theirs failed and how their MLM was the opportunity that turned everything around for them. I think the point of this is to convince people how amazing their MLM is, but to me, it just reaffirms what I've always believed, that the people at the top of these MLMs actually have no business acumen whatsoever and have failed at every other form of legitimate business they've tried their hand at and so now they've opted for deceiving people into a pyramid scheme instead I, i've been the same for 33 years and i'm a master fortune doing it i never said i made money off of it I, I, i've been in it 33 years but you did say you made journey. money off it you said you've made a fortune off of it you know a lot of these multi my companies there their products are tied to recruiting they'll package the product inside the application and say right. oh no it doesn't cost you nothing to join i haven't made a dime in my 33 year career ever on recruiting anybody no, right, yeah. i wish i did okay right, yeah. i didn't have one penny on anybody sign up in this company ever another lie here's a clip from yet another gary zoom i attended where he talks about how the downline of one single recruit makes up a large chunk of his income out of 13 license i think he's at 600 700 of them one person is a third of my business, pretty much. My lifestyle is so freaking awesome. There's no words in the dictionary to explain it. I can go anywhere I want to go, stay as long as I want to stay. I could burn through a hundred grand. And by the time I make it back home in 15 days from that vacation, a hundred thousand back in my account. You're one recruit away from being a millionaire. What is this right here? If I say triangle, it's not a pyramid. So this is me. I made two hundred thousand a month. Yeah, the corporate structure. Well, they, they don't like that. All the anti multi guys go, and, they, and those people in the network marketing, they try to say, well, a job is like a pyramid. You have the president of the company, the vice president of the company, you have the executive board. And how do you go up? Well, you got to wait till this person gets fired because it gets smaller as it gets closer to the top. So this guy is trying to kill this guy. That guy probably will never stop. You would ne never. Here, Gary uses this mocking tone to imitate those who are opposed to multi-level marketing and actually ends up proving the point that he's trying to argue against. MLM is not like a corporate structure. This is one of the most common false equivalences used by people in MLMs to try and argue that everything is a pyramid scheme. They will look at something that has a hierarchical structure that you could draw as a triangle or pyramid on paper. They will then leave out the word scheme and go, see, everything is a pyramid. Your job is a pyramid. Your family's a pyramid. There's your grandma your grandpa, your mom, your dad, you, your brother, your sister, your kids, isn't that multi-level? So they focus on the shape of the structure and not the things that make it a pyramid scheme, specifically the pay to play mandate, the endless chain recruiting model, the recruiting mandate to reach the next level and the extreme money transfer from the bottom 99% of participants to the 1% at the top. The United States government is structured just like a triangle. The president did not become the president because he recruited three vice presidents and so on. Gary's analogy is complete nonsense. Then he says that the people at the bottom of a corporate structure will never reach the top. This is just simply untrue. You absolutely can work your way up through a company to get a better position. It's called a promotion and they're fundamental elements of business. If everyone stayed at the same position in a company forever, what would happen when all the senior members retired? There has to be people at lower levels who move up and take their place and new people to fill in the spaces for those who have moved up. And you know who would understand this concept, Gary? Anyone who's actually worked a job. 50% of our marriages end in divorce. Those are real numbers, but I'm not yeah. I'm going to go to somebody's wedding this Saturday and go, um, can I say something real quick? <laughs> Do you know you have a 50% chance of this working? Here, Gary talks about 50% of marriages failing as his way of responding to the fact that 99% of annual participants in MLMs lose money. Never mind that a 50% failure rate is nowhere near a 99% failure rate, but married couples are not getting divorced because they failed to recruit three other married couples and so on. I've heard so many of these deflections from people who have been brainwashed by MLMs. They'll say, you know what the real scam is? college. Student loans are so high, the business professor doesn't even own a business, etc. But pointing out the shortcomings of other things doesn't wash away your own. Imagine you were standing before a judge in court, accused of stealing a car, and instead of pleading your case, you just went, well, your honor, that guy stole a bike. America's in a crisis. The world is in a crisis. People are losing hope. Because see, folks, after slavery came jobs. Job is another form of slavery. Why? Because you work for someone, they get all the wealth, and they give you what? The crumbs. The Bible says the borrower is a slave to the lender. Isn't that amazing that one of your credit cards is called MasterCard? And to every master, there's a slave. 
I can't tell you how uncomfortable it makes me to have to point out to Gary, a black man who is old enough to be my father, that jobs and slavery are not the same thing. In that clip, which is from 2009, Gary uses the economic factors of the world at the time to explain why now is the time to join Primerica. He does the exact same thing in this clip from 2020. The world needs us today, more so than ever. People are scared fearful, going into depression, and we have to be the neighborhood hope dealer. What Gary is doing here is called thought stopping. He's getting you to operate on emotion instead of thinking critically. If you were at a vulnerable time in your life and then you came across someone like Gary, a well-dressed, charismatic person who claims to be an entrepreneur who makes a fortune and helps others to do the same, you might be convinced. Add to that the fact that you were likely introduced to this person by a close friend or family member that you already know and trust. Add to that the fact that you're most likely influenced by the peer pressure or mob psychology that comes along with being presented the opportunity in a room full of people who are clapping and cheering and laughing in support of the person at the front of the room, in this case, Gary. In the next clip, you're going to see Gary do exactly that to hundreds of young black people at last year's African American Leadership Council event from Primerica. What I didn't tell you yet is that Primerica has an African American, Hispanic American, and Asian Pacific Islander Leadership Council. In my opinion, these councils and their events are used to target these ethnic groups specifically for recruitment because these are unfortunately among the demographics graphics that have the largest, most closely knit families and communities that can be exploited by an MLM company's endless chain. I'm going to show you how to get wealthy. And I know for a fact that if you follow these principles, you can walk out of here today, literally, right, and say, guess what, mama? Guess what, wife? Guess what, husband? Guess what, kids? Guess what, dad? We're going to be rich. It's a mindset. I'm going to win here. I'm going to win here. If I don't win, if I don't win, this is not a win. If I don't win, it's cause I don't wanna win. This is the preemptive victim blaming that every MLM I've ever looked at uses to get you to believe that if you fail, it's your fault. Just look at me, I'm successful, so obviously the system works. Maybe you just didn't work. I trained my son to be an entrepreneur. He'll never work in ever in his life. Just as a sin in my household to have a job. Spoken like a true spoiled rich kid, every MLM I've ever studied looks at jobs as the worst possible thing that could happen to someone. They have these little acronyms designed to make themselves look like they're above the slavery of having a J-O-B, journey of the broke, just over broke, etc. This type of behavior is dehumanizing and wrong. It's also ironic because even those pesky little jobs that pay the least would still earn you more than you would likely make in an MLM. Speaking of Gary's son, let's look at how Gary Cornegay Jr. aka G2 has blossomed under Gary Sr.'s leadership. The person that's been BSing you, saying they want to talk about it later, they want to think about it, I don't know. This is where you pull the trigger. This is where you poke your chest out. This is where you start talking that way. You start saying, hey, listen, I'm three clients away from a promotion. Somebody in your house is buying a policy tonight. And this fool let me ride his wife up. I do this all the time, by the way. See, I'm stupid enough to believe what's being said from the stage. Do me a favor, take your ID out. Let's go ahead and start this application. How much will it be today? It, oh, it's only 124. You got that. I know you got that. Come on, let's go ahead. Well, I don't I don't have it. Perfect. Who can we call to get it? Because you can't pass up on this once in a lifetime opportunity. Well, I can join under you next week. I'm going to be honest with you. I might be wealthy as all outdoors next week and don't want to work with you. Now let's look at another one of Gary's recruits, Vivian, and see what her Primerica recruiting presentation looks like. 90% of, of winning in Primerica has everything to do with your mindset. Mentorship is so big, you guys. And so attending these Zoom meetings are very is very important to building your business. And I'm going to be honest with you, you will not make it in this business if you miss meetings. Having control over your time is a fundamental priority of cults. They need you to be constantly inundated with noise, whether that's Zoom meetings, in-person meetings, engaging and posting on social media, Telegram group chats, events, etc. And mind you, this is unpaid time that you're spending on Primerica that isn't actually centered around selling anything or making money. And Vivian is saying that if you miss these meetings, you won't make it in Primerica. On this slide in Vivian's presentation, it says, the only way to build long-term passive income is through having a system where recruiting never stops. Passive income means you do the work once and you get paid forever. So how can this be passive income if recruiting never stops? Gary is a prime example of this. He's dedicating hours of his time every week to these Zoom calls, which means it's not passive income. And everybody recruits, okay? The military stays recruiting. The NFL, NBA, right? They stay recruiting. Colleges stay recruiting. So if you want to stay in business long enough, you know that you gotta keep recruiting, right? Again, with the false equivalencies. NBA teams do not win championships by having the biggest downline of players. Nonsense, nonsense, and more nonsense. Everyone 
everyone wants to make money. Okay. So who do you know that's, that maybe is a stay at home parent? Who do you know that maybe just got laid off, right? Start thinking of people and um, you're going to set up recruiting appointments with them. Who do you know that's struggling? Who do you know that already trusts you? They'd be perfect for Primerica. I've never heard anyone in any of these meetings say, who do you know that's already great with finance and is making good money? Because of course not. Those people are doing just fine working their horrible J-O-Bs. Remember how Gary said that all those other MLM companies that are pyramid schemes, in his opinion, tie the product to recruiting? Well, in the next segment, Vivian explains how to do exactly that, even showing how it's incentivized with a $500 bonus for those who sign up new recruits and sell those new recruits a policy. It also proves that Gary saying, we don't pay bonuses, is a flat out lie. In order for you to get promoted to what's called a district leader, we're going to recruit six business partners for you. Let's say all six of your people get their own life insurance and the average sell is $84. That's 6,000 in volume that is done within your team and you haven't even done any training yet. So you actually earn $200 for every training sale that we close over 1,000 in yearly volume and we bring a, a recruit attached to that. Primerica has this awesome incentive going on right now, but for recruiting one business partner and doing three insurance sales, they're going to throw another $500. Now you have your six by six. I wasn't even making this at my job after taxes. So to get this on a bonus and all you got to do is put me in front of people. Literally, that's how simple this is, okay? So simple. Here's my question. If you remove the part where you sell insurance to each of your recruits, how successful would Primerica really be? Same goes for every MLM. Would they see any sales of their products if the people recruited to the company weren't also encouraged or mandated to buy them as well? Also, this six by six that Vivian mentioned seems very unassuming, but if you actually play that out, a process of six people who recruit six people who recruit six people could only be repeated 12 cycles before your downline exceeded the entire population of the earth. And because the bottom of the pyramid is always expanding with each new layer, the majority of all recruits will always be in the bottom layer. This means that it will always be mathematically impossible for the majority of people in the company to move up even one level. Also, if the people in my downline cancel their policy or one of their customers cancels their policy, it triggers what's called a chargeback, meaning that advanced commission you got when you made the sale has to be paid back to the policy issuer. And that means that everyone above you in the chain gets a chargeback on their piece of the pie as well. The only way to guarantee that a person leaving the company doesn't have this detrimental effect on me is to keep recruiting. This proven system is in a constant state of collapse and the only solution is for recruitment to outpace quitting. Now you have six people to work with, six people that are not licensed, Reggie, six people that need to, to need, need to get trained and promoted just like you. So guess what, Reggie, if you had to book eight to 10 appointments, what do you think your six people have to do? This is a huge red flag. New recruits are being encouraged to prospect their friends and family on behalf of their upline before they themselves are even licensed. But why would you give your sales away to your upline instead of waiting until you got your license and making the sales yourself? Surely the commission you would make from those sales is more than this field training bonus would be, right? The field training bonus actually only benefits your upline. If only five of your new recruits made a purchase, then you wouldn't be eligible for the bonus because you need six recruits to buy a policy to get the bonus. But your upline would still get paid off the five people that you did bring in. It's like a scam within the scam. So let's say on the average, each person books at least six appointments, 36 appointments, and let's say the average sell is a thousand. That's 36,000. If you're at a 50% contract that I got you at, 50% of 36,000 is 18,000 that you make your first month license. In a business model where most people will lose money, how do you say something like this with a straight face? Vivian finishes off her presentation with this list template for you to fill in, as well as a script for what to say on the phone to your potential recruits. In this script, it says to tell your recruit that in order to qualify to get licensed, you need to observe eight to 10 field training observations. This is simply a lie. Anyone can go get their insurance license from the government. You don't need Primerica. And even if you were in Primerica, you still wouldn't be required to do these field training appointments to get your license. I found this video on Gary's YouTube channel, which is about Vivian and her pursuit of the Primerica dream. And this video absolutely broke my heart. And I felt I was stuck. I had dropped out of college and I felt like, okay, I need to find a career. I need to find something stable. My childhood friends, they said, I want to introduce you to somebody. Everyone was trying to talk me out of, you know, don't do that. You're wasting your time. And I realized no one around me was successful. And I remember like crying and like yelling, like you guys just don't want to see me do good. You don't understand. My best friend from high school said almost exactly the same thing to me when I tried to express my concern about the MLM he was in. He was 
brainwashed. In the next part, Vivian talks about her mom getting sick with cancer and passing away shortly after. She says that during the time her mom was sick, she locked herself up in her home office and got to work trying to build her Primerica business instead of spending time with her family because they would understand later. She felt that she was doing this for them. And then this is kind of where the business really did pay off because why do you build a business? That month I took off and my business kept working without me, buying my dream car, materialistic stuff, but things that I lost that I gained back and then some. When I say I found my purpose, I found my purpose. This is so heartbreaking to me because I believe Vivian is a good person whose situation was taken advantage of. I also empathize with her regarding the passing of her mom because last year, my grandma was suddenly diagnosed with stage four cancer and died a month later. When our loved ones pass away, the time we had with them is the only thing that matters, not money or anything else. Vivian explains that it was thanks to Primerica that she was able to take time off after her mom passed away, but I can't help but feel like the time she should have been taking off was when her mom was still alive. And then talking about buying her dream car and gaining back what she lost and then some. I just don't understand this. A car is just a car. The money can't bring her mom back. Vivian, if you're watching this, I want you to know I don't think you're a bad person. I don't think you're a scammer. You said at the end that you found your purpose. Vivian, I promise you, God did not take away your mom as some sign that you need to do Primerica. Gary has been in Primerica for 35 years. I can't even begin to imagine the number of Vivians that have been created as a result of his mentorship. I think if Gary Gary was such a good mentor and such a respectable businessman. He should have used some of his endless wealth to help you during your time of need so you could enjoy the little time you had left with your mom. After all, in Gary's own words, I could burn through a hundred grand. Let's break down this unlimited income potential, shall we? First, you join Primerica as an associate for $99. Then you get your state insurance license. Now you're at the representative level and you get a 25% commission of any life insurance policy that you sell, which is severely lower than the standard starting commission for most life insurance companies that don't don't use an MLM model. This makes me think, why would a company whose goal is to make sales put the obstacle in their own way of making people pay to work for them as well as having to recruit others when most insurance companies don't do this? With Primerica, you can unlock a higher commission by recruiting people under you who also pay to join the company. This harkens back to the mathematically impossible six by six we looked at earlier. Technically with Primerica, you could just sell the products and not recruit anyone, but the starting commission is so low that even if you were able to sell $4,000 worth of life insurance in your first month as a brand new agent, your commission would only be $1,000. And the expectation I've been given so far during this meeting is making hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. But with this model where advancement is based on recruiting, you could rise through the ranks of Primerica and make money without ever trying to sell to customers, instead just recruiting more people and selling a policy to them when they join. And from what we've seen, this is exactly what recruits are encouraged to do. I found 20 of these fast start guides, which were created by the leaders of different teams or base shops in Primerica. Technically, these aren't official Primerica documents, and I'm sure Primerica would deny that they approve of these fast start guides being used to train new recruits, but in my opinion, these are an accurate representation of how Primerica's recruiters are actually operating out in the field. In one of the fast start guides from the TMM base shop, which stands for Turner Millionaire Movement, the first page talks about how you could be making between $1,000 and $3,000 per month within 60 days, and emphasizes the importance of not letting negative people destroy your positive attitude and desire to win. On page two, it says, commit to the four-point game plan. And step one is everyone is focused on recruiting. At the end, it includes this image, which is literally a pyramid recruiting model. The rest of the document includes spaces to write down your goals, a list of friends and family you can call up and pitch Primerica to, and a template of a script telling you what you should and shouldn't say when recruiting someone to Primerica, similar to what we saw at the end of Vivian's presentation. The other 19 fast start manuals from different base shops are all almost identical to this one. Ultimately, I think disguising your MLM as a financial services company is a really clever way of running an MLM because you do have to get licensed to sell financial services and products. So saying that you're a financial advisor appears a lot more legit on the surface than just selling shampoo or protein shakes like some other MLMs. Nonetheless, it's still just an elaborate disguise to hide the true money maker in the company, recruitment. And when recruitment is touted as the real way to make money, this should be a huge red flag that you're looking at a pyramid scheme. According to Primerica's annual report for 2021, there were 349,374 new recruits and around 39,000 or roughly Roughly one tenth of them even made it to the point of getting licensed, which means that only around one tenth of all new recruits who joined Primerica were even eligible to earn money from the compensation plan at all. And at the end of the year, they had roughly the same amount of licensed sales reps as they did at the beginning of the year. But how? Didn't they bring on almost 40,000 new licensed agents? Does that mean that around 40,000 people left the company? 
Yes, this is what I meant when I talked about how the business model is in a constant state of collapse. So how much did the people who could even earn money make? In 2021, the average earnings of a Primerica recruit was $8,410 a year or $700 a month, not including expenses. It costs $99 to join Primerica plus a monthly fee of $25 for their back office software. So if you stayed in for one year, you'd have spent roughly $400 that year. This doesn't even include any policies or financial products you may have purchased from Primerica yourself or the the opportunity cost of your time or other expenses relating to Primerica like gas, driving to and from the office. This also doesn't include maybe the biggest factor, which is that this average is massively inflated because it takes into account the earnings of the people at the top of the pyramid. If even one of these people was taken out of the equation, that average would be much, much lower. So it's not hard to imagine that most of the people who even made it to the point of earning anything lost money. Ready to go a little deeper down the rabbit hole of mindless motivational babble and toxic positivity? Look no further than Daniel Alonzo. Frequencies. You should be listening to frequencies often. What is confidence? Write this down. Progress equals happiness. Get out of the lazy business, okay? All we are is energy. I wanted to be partying on Friday night. No mistakes. Only lessons. Friday night is a great night to party. I want to party on Friday night. We're not real. All of us. What are your habits? It's a different world when you go out on Tuesday night versus Friday night. Whatever you think about is going to be created in your reality. Frequencies. Oh, you're gonna go to that Prime America thing on Saturday morning? Instead of popping that medicine or whatever, go listen to some frequencies. Fuck it, man. I don't give a shit about what anybody thinks about me. I don't care that I'm uneducated. I don't have a college education. Believe in yourself. Daniel has been in Prime America for a very long time and he leans into the pseudoscience of the law of attraction and alternative medicine harder than anyone I've seen in Prime America. He also has a YouTube channel where he teaches about business with videos like how to get a new recruit off to a fast start. All new recruits should watch How to this. coach a new recruit. Recruiting tips. Recruit to build Show a bit. To your new recruit. How to recruit more people in Why you struggle with recruiting. How to overcome recruiting How to objections. triple your recruits. How to recruit more people. How to people. recruit someone in six minutes. Daniel emphasizes recruiting and duplication as the real drivers of success in Primerica. Even going as far as saying in one of his Instagram captions, this is your real job. Recruiting is the answer to all of your business problems. As a new entrepreneur, your job is to recruit. A guy told me, hey, aren't you a pyramid? What I asked them is, first of, all, first of all, do you like pyramids? No, I don't like pyramids. And I say, then we're nothing like a pyramid. Number one, pyramids are illegal. I love this answer. It's one of my favorite deflections used by MLM recruiters because it implies that just because something is illegal, it doesn't exist. Imagine someone getting pulled over for drunk driving and they tell the cop, officer, there's no way I could have been drunk driving. Drunk driving is illegal. An illegal pyramid scheme, money is made primarily by recruiting others without any real products or services, all right? That's the difference, okay? The physical product is what makes it legal. You sound really, really uneducated when you say that because nobody ever says that, right? If you actually understand business, you would never say that. This is wrong. There have been more than 30 companies shut down for being pyramid schemes and all of them had products. All of them were also considered to be legitimate multi-level marketing companies up until the day they were discovered not to be. I personally believe that every single MLM company that exists today is in fact a pyramid scheme, but political lobbying stops regulators from opening a wider investigation into the industry as a whole. Instead, choosing to appear to do something about the problem on a case-by-case -case basis, weeding out individual companies, but doing nothing about the root problem. Here to help us understand how Primerica specifically contributes to this political game is William Keep, professor of marketing from the College of New Jersey. So the first slide I'm showing you here is the percentage of political contributions given by three MLM companies, Primerica, Amway, and Melaleuca, relative to three well-known leading companies in three major industries, Meta, Pfizer, and Goldman Sachs. These are leading firms, MLM companies, in an industry that constitutes less than 1% U.S. retail sales, disproportionately, I think, giving to political candidates and political parties. Here I've added in annual lobbying in these years. The biggest increase we see from the previous slide is with Primerica, clearly leading the MLM companies in terms of the increase due to lobbying. The way I interpret these graphs is that the MLM companies have a much bigger interest in making sure the government is on their good side than even companies companies like Meta or Pfizer. Is that how you would interpret this? Yeah, I agree with that. These are people who think about how they spend their money and this is how they've decided to spend their money year after year. So they must be getting something that they like as a result. I know what your mom said. Your mom said that if it sounds too good to be true, 
It, it probably is. But like, it sounds almost too good to be true. Absolutely. Of course it does. Is it just pessimism and negativity that is yes. stopping people from doing this? Yes, 100%. The real thing is all of these older generations, they think it's a pyramid. What is that? A pyramid is if, a, uh, so a, the way a pyramid is, it's quite illegal actually. A pyramid scheme. A pyramid scheme okay. is the top person gets all the money uh -huh. and nobody else gets anywhere. Right? And people think this is that. Well, some, t some people do think this is that, of course, because we have RVP and then we have regional leader and we have district leader. But if you think about it, your job has a CEO, then it has a manager, the night manager and day manager, and then it's got supervisors and then it's got the peons. My dad, for instance, Primerica's a scam. It's a pyramid. It's all these things. No matter what I told the man, he was not listening. You know what? It's okay because I believe in it. I think this is going to change my life. This is going to change my children's lives. And I left him alone. When you get started in something like this, your friends, your friends may change. You have to seriously take your, open your, give it a and wash. And you know what? You know, Put it back on. <laughs> the, uh, your head. Hey. Brain. You, what, you gotta, gotta brainwash yourself into the proper things in life. Totally. Don't get me wrong. I learned about insurance and investments and all that crap we talk about, but I learned about who I really am. And I took that and I ran with it and I just became that better person. Just like, just like anybody who comes here. And now you see how the mind virus of multi-level marketing can spread. Here's this woman all the way up here in Alberta, Canada, saying the exact same things we've seen said by top leaders in Primerica. And she has been chasing this Primerica dream for 15 years to the detriment of her relationship with her dad and who knows how much money. I don't believe this lady is a bad person. Like Vivian, I believe that she has been so effectively brainwashed that she doesn't even see the layers of deception that are at play here. She believes. So is Primerica a pyramid scheme? According to the FTC, the four warning signs of a pyramid scheme are 1. Promoters make extravagant promises about your earning potential. Stop. These promises are false. Guess what, Dad? We're going to be rich. 2. Promoters emphasize recruiting new distributors for your sales network as the real way to make money. Walk away. As a new entrepreneur, your job is to recruit. 3. Promoters play on your emotions or use high pressure sales tactics, maybe saying you'll lose the opportunity if you don't act now and discouraging you from taking time to study the company. Leave by the nearest exit. I might be wealthy as all outdoors next week and don't wanna work with you. Four, distributors buy more products than they want to use or can resell just to stay active in the company or to qualify for bonuses or other rewards. If you see this happening, keep your money. Let's say all six of your people get their own life insurance and the average sell is $84. That's 6,000 in volume that is done within your team and you haven't even done any training yet. Throughout this video, we have seen every single one of these boxes checked. So why is Primerica still around and why hasn't anything been done? Unfortunately, the amount of people that actually take the time to report when they've been scammed is insanely low and I can understand why. The shame can be immense and most people probably feel like just moving on after it happens to them or they feel like making their voice heard won't actually do anything. But I can promise you that's not true. The spread of videos like this is proof of that. People want change and historically, change only happens when enough people make their voices heard. Those of us who have lost money, time, or relationships owe it to ourselves as well as future victims to report these things. Instead of promoting my Patreon or merchandise, I'm going to ask that you take a minute to use either the FTC form or the Canadian Competition Bureau form in the description and report your experience with an MLM company. Whether you were in one and felt you were deceived, or you were prospected and promised financial freedom, or if you have a friend or relative who is or has been in one, let's spare the next generation from multi-level marketing. And to Gary, Mario, Daniel, and anyone else perpetuating the lie that Primerica is the way to financial freedom, fuck you.